a Plaguelands Media production. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you another book review today. So cheers. Today I am going to review The Leaves of a Necronomicon. This is a short story collection. You get about 20 short stories in this collection edited by Joseph S. Pulver Sr. And the premise of this collection of short stories is basically uh, someone has reassembled the John D. translation of the Necronomicon. If you are a fan of Cthulhu Mythos, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. If not, go look it up. And uh, each of these stories is about the owners of the book, uh, how they come into possession of it, what the book does to them, that kind of a thing. What's very rare about this short story collection is there's not a bad story in the collection itself. Not once did I find a story that I went, that was kind of shit. Moved on to the next one. Every story in this collection is absolute fucking gold. And if you run Call of Cthulhu as a role-playing game like I do, there is material in here that is going to blow your players' minds, and I actually plan on using some of the stuff from this in future adventures. If any of my players are watching, fucking stop! Don't fucking spoil it for yourselves. Luke, Ian, I'm fucking talking to you, you douchebags. Anyway, with all that aside, let's move on to the next episode of... Read a fucking book. 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 People. Before I get into it, you guys aren't douchebags. We have a lot of fun every fucking week, with the exception of the past few weeks because we haven't been able to play. But, uh, yeah. My players are my players, they are fucking awesome, and every game of Call of Cthulhu that we have played has been an absolute blast. I didn't mean that, that was me speaking out in anger, and rage, and... What's that? You want me to drink you now? Okay. Now I'm not going to spoil any of these short stories, but I do want to go over the list with you. It is quite comprehensive and I think it's important because I think the authors of these short stories need to be given their dues. So the, the novel, the collection I should say, starts with The Bookmaker by Nate Peterson. Now, uh, this basically is the creation of this version of the Necronomicon, the John D version um, has never been kind of bound together in one book because no one can find all of the pages, but someone does and hires a bookkeeper to create this version of the Necronomicon. Which leads into The Collector of Rare Editions by Donald Tyson. This was cool. Um, this was basically the guy that, that had the Necronomicon created and the, the story is what it does to him and to his daughter, which leads into the next story, Down to a Sunless Sea by Alison Bird, which follows uh, the, the collector's daughter kind of following in her father's footsteps. Um, we have Dawn Watch by Daniel Mills, Liquor City by Nick... Um, Momentous, I want to say. I'm going to butcher these names because I wrote them very quickly. Um, all through these these different stories, In Waves by S.P. Uh, Miskasi, uh, Eyes on Fire by Cody Goodfellow, 
Horrors Worse Than Hell by Robert M. Price, Laying the Words by Don Webb, Mysteries Don't Sleep by Anna Tambor, The Sunsaw by Mike Allen. What you're getting is the book being passed down. How these people find it is irrelevant. How these people get it is irrelevant. What this book does to them is the key to this uh, collection. Um, Flickering, uh, Flickering Room by E. Catherine Tobler. Sewn Into Pieces, Stitched Into Place by Damien Angelica Walters. Too Many Pages by Simon Stranzes. 11 O'Clock by Nikki Gerlin. Void Kiss by Michael Sisko. Letter Found Sitting Atop a Rare Old Hardbound Book of Dark Portent by Anna Tambin. And I, uh, and I Water It in Fears by Sonny Moran. Miles and Catherine at the Crimson by Michael Griffin. Passages for the Dying and the Dead by S.P. Miskowski. And Menage a Trois by Ross E. Lockhart, The Persuader by Jeffrey Thomas. Okay. That's a lot of stories. You're getting 20 stories in this collection. Of course, like I say, none of them are bad, but there are some standouts. And it usually comes in twos and threes. So you get the beginning of a story in one. For example, um, there is a, a story where um, a, a woman has a copy of the Necronomicon that her uh, boyfriend or husband uh, gets as part of a trial because the person that originally owned it was killed. And then that kind of moves on to the next story where she kills a guy. And then the next story is that guy's spirit kind of hunting her down. And you get these overlaying um, extended stories, but they're all based around the one book that when you read the beginning of the collection, we saw how it was created. And that is really, really cool. I'm a huge Cthulhu fan. I'm a huge fan of anything like Necronomicon based, um, fucking Evil Dead and all that kind of cool shit. The Leaves of a Necronomicon is just an absolutely fantastic short story collection. I would love to spoil these for you. I would love to sit here and go, this is the first story, and this is the second story, and this is the third story. But when it comes to short story collections, when it comes to short stories, that's doing you an injustice. You need to go out and read these and explore them for yourselves and discover them for yourselves because that's ultimately the joy of this collection of short stories. I thought, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I thought this was going to be shit going into it. The leaves of a Necronomicon. Okay, I get it. The pages of the Necronomicon. Blah, 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 blah. Fucking blew my mind. 100%. Go out. Check out the leaves of a Necronomicon. You will not be disappointed, especially if you are a fan of Cthulhu Mythos and Cthulhu lore. With that said, stay safe. Do all the YouTube stuff. I'm not going to fucking go over it now. I'm thirsty. I want a drink. Cheers. Hmm. Yeah. One second. But stay safe. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Please, everyone. Go out there and just, you know, 